Welcome back to the channel. This is Anka Engineering and I'm Herman Wiegman. And today's just gonna be a quick update on the lightweight battery that I chose for my Jaguar F-Type. Let's get stuck in. From last episode, uh, I talked about getting a new anti-grav battery, which was 40 pounds less and several hundred dollars more than a nominal lead acid replacement from Jaguar Land Rover. And I thought that was a good decision for me. Uh, I think losing the weight is a good idea, but I do have to be cognizant of the fact that I bought a 40 amp hour battery from Antigrav instead of the traditional 95 amp hour battery from Jaguar Land Rover. So that is a lower capacity. Um, and I was uh, able to take a measurement on the car and the car does consume about 50 milliamps of quiescent or standby current from the battery. Now, if you have a 40 amp hour battery and you're pulling 50 milliamps, that takes about 800 hours then to fully discharge that battery, which is one month. So if I don't drive the car for a few weeks, three weeks, uh, it's gonna be drained. Now, there's a few things I've done about that. First is I got a battery tender, and this one here does have uh, appropriate maintenance for lithium iron phosphate battery, which the anti-gravity is of that type. It also has a lead acid option. So for me, this battery tender was great. I can jump between the two modes depending upon which car, or which car I'm charging. The second thing is the anti-grav battery comes with a restart feature on this key fob such that it monitors its state and if it drains too low, it cuts off from the car, preserving 30% roughly stated charge in the battery, appropriate enough to then restart the car. So the key fob can be engaged, the battery then is connected to the car and you're able to restart it. Okay, so that's the two things I'm doing to compensate for a lower amp acid battery. Another feature I like about the Antigrav battery is it has a much higher cold cranking amps than the traditional lead acid battery. The traditional battery has 850 cold cranking amps while the Antigrav that's installed in the car has 1,500 amperes of cold cranking uh, current, which is twice the capability, which says two things. Uh, it's gonna be faster start of the engine because the battery's more capable, but also it means that as the battery becomes depleted, it still has a lot of cold cranking amps available. So that's why the restart technology works uh, because you can drain the lithium iron phosphates down to 30%, 25% state of charge and still they have enough cold cranking amp performance to start the engine. While in a lead acid, when it becomes depleted or down less than 40% state of charge, the cold cranking amps fall off and it's not able to start your car. So the cold cranking capability of this battery is just phenomenal. I'm really excited about that. Now the footprint of the new battery is a different footprint, uh, but it's the same width, it fits in the same channel. Uh, it's just a little shorter, that's all. So it's an H7 replacement of a H8 battery. The original one from Jaguar was an H8A. Uh, but the terminals were on the right side, the plus and the minus were located in the same spot. So it was very easy to fit this slightly smaller battery into my Jaguar F-Type. It really was no problem whatsoever. So that was good. So I'm gonna monitor the progress on this battery, see how it uh, is maintained by the battery tender and uh, seeing how its uh, start-stop performance goes. And maybe I'll even check out the uh, restart feature by draining the battery, not plugging in the tender, letting the car drain down, and uh, seeing how it goes, and test it out with the uh, key fob. And I'll get back to you. And in the meantime, drive well, my friends. 